Well, you know, we've got censorship of degree now. I think we're allowed to get away with doing what we do just simply so they can get tabs on people. Um, because they don't care. I mean, they don't, they don't care what the law is and they don't care what, what you believe your rights are. These are people, these are pedophiles who are harvesting most of the human race. They'll just take you out and kill you. They don't care. They have no morals. They have no scruples. They don't abide by the legal system. The legal system's there to tie us up, up in red tape, not to provide any remedy for us and not to, not to be used to hold them accountable for anything. So you've really got to look yeah. at it. You know, I just wonder, I just wonder how much good I'm doing on Facebook. I mean, it isn't something that I really participate in much at all anyway. So I just, I just think, you know, it'd be, it's a thorn in their side if I don't use it. So I shouldn't use it, you know? So, you know, I mean, I'd, um, I'd, I'd love to, if I ever get arrested or ever get asked by anything by the police, I mean, the first <laughs> thing you can ask for is your, is your, is your cell phone details and your, your Facebook account. It was simple to say to them, I actually don't have either of those. And they're going to go, oh, <laughs> I mean, we, you mean we actually have to do some detective work and find out stuff about you ourselves? Well, the modern police are too stupid. They wouldn't even know how to do that, you know? So just to see the look on their faces, it's worth cancelling the Facebook account. I mean, you know, I, I just kind of have that, that feeling about it, you know? So. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I, I've also noticed, too, um, is that, as more people start to awaken and they're processing their shame and they're dealing with their self with self worth and and the more they it's like the more they they face their own self worth and that they are worthy and deserving and everything you've you've ranted on for forever and a day once once they start to realize that they tend to go into what I refer to as um, abundant shock that I also refer to as the problem is that there is no problem. Um, if someone has neural networks that have gotten comfortable with and used to and familiar with the idea of of normal equals there's there's always problems or drama or some sort or this and that and never any good things and then all of a sudden things start getting better for them and they have realizations and things start getting a li little bit more positive for them um once that happens too much it creates cognitive dissonance because now their external reality is starting to um defy um their own core belief systems and of course, um, a similar equal and opposite inversion of the same thing happens if information is um, more negative than than what they're used to. Um, again, still the reactions caused by the the deep um, shame um, and self worth issues that they have. Now, what I've also noticed is once people clear out enough of these issues, they're able to much better handle. Um, you know the details about the global stage um, whereas any human being when they get too much information overload and cognitive dissonance they go into um, anxiety and you know that and I'm not talking about the SJWs making excuses and trying to promote political correctness I'm talking about legitimate anxiety that messes with your head but when people like this are willing and determined to um, proceed forward and to shift through it and face themselves, um, they they do start to become very very um, empowered people. Um, I just want to reference my friend um, Katarina Roy. Um, you you have talked to her once, and um, she used to be one of those people that was still dealing with so much of her own Stockholm syndrome and being manipulated by narcissists in her life and this and that that. Even simple geopolitics used to just create so much cognitive dissonance in her brain and confusion that she was terrified of it. She didn't want to deal with it. But now at this point that she's worked out a lot more of her shame issues and she's really raised her sense of self-worth, she can talk geopolitics like a boss. So my point in telling you this is simply to show you that there are people being shifted and you've also indirectly helped Katarina as well because she's heard you talk and stuff too. She's not like a hardcore listener of your stuff, but she's heard things here and there and you have a very eloquent, you know, way, sensible way of explaining yourself. So, you know, you break it down easy. And that's, that's another thing that can create cognitive dissonance with people too because 
when when something is very easy to understand and clear to understand but it also contradicts the core belief system that makes the cognitive dissonance even greater but everybody's going through their processes on this and it's a turbulent dark night of the soul but man once people really get through it they become so freaking empowered so i want you to know that that's the effect you're having on people and yeah it takes a period of time however long it takes someone to go from from shame to start getting into empowerment that's their personal journey but i want you to know that these personal journeys are happening you're not out there speaking for nothing yeah i know i know a lot of people are listening and, and a lot of people like you say they're very uncomfortable with change they get locked into their their whole core belief system it's a, like a lot of even the independent media i mean i've noticed whenever i've tried to do anything that's going to create unity or anything that might lead to remedy People, people will not do it. There's so many people who uh, the fight against the system is, is their life. It's all they know. And if they weren't fighting against the system and getting out there and being an activist every day, if we actually healed everything and the world started going in the right direction, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. And also a lot of people would lose their income because there's a lot of that that's going on on YouTube now as well. There's been a lot of you know, monetization of accounts and sensationalizing. Like in the last two years, your YouTube has become almost like the mainstream media and as fact is everything is over sensationalized. You, know, you get anything you can on anybody who's got a name, post whatever dirt you can get on them, just as clickbait, just to get an income. You know, I get that, people either get that, you'll see bad articles, bad jackets put on everybody you can think of just to get the clicks, just to get the income. Um, sensationalized news reports that uh, loosely based in truth just to get the income so there's been a lot of that going on as well so um a lot of people wouldn't know what to do if we won if if the world just changed their whole <laughs> they wouldn't know how to deal with peace they wouldn't know how to deal with prosperity they wouldn't know how to deal with freedom yeah now, a lot of people want freedom but well, they don't they know what it looks like and they've got no idea yeah. what the path to it is. all they believe is freedom means they don't have to do anything or be responsible for anything and no one's going to ask them for anything well, they don't have to pay for anything. That seems to be what most people think freedom is, and really, that's not not what it is. You know, freedom is self responsibility, and most people or or e sorry. or even worse, even worse. You know, the people that that really believe in their in their heart of hearts that they're when they're wanting to fight tyranny and make this world a better place, they never stop to ask the question. Okay what if we win what then what are you going to replace it with and i've seen these two extremes where people either they you know they don't ask that question to begin with or people do ask that question and they come up with resource-based economics to set and whatever but they they fail to recognize that any fool can can break even a perfect system no one ever ever stops to consider transitional phases you know between point a and b it's common sense for us to realize that you don't go from a baby to a college graduate in 10 seconds there's this transitional phase of growing up um, to where the baby goes through its years of life and puberty and this and that, etc., and then on into adulthood. Um, similarly, as a society, as a civilization, there needs to be transitional phases out of our, our current system and then eventually into something like resource-based economics. Um, I, think, I think the middle of that journey would be equity-based economics to where this, this fiat scumbag, um, you know, Ponzi scheme monetary system um, no longer exists. Governments actually um, make their own money. The Federal Reserve is gone and, you know, um, things move in a better direction. And then eventually transitioning out of the need for government at all because government just means mind control. But people can't quit a system cold turkey because it creates too much cognitive dissonance. You need transitional phases. So people are either locked in a future. Sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, you do. You need transitional stages. I mean, you can't go straight from, from you know, slavery to anarchy. It's not going to work. But the thing is, I mean, even talking about bringing in resource-based economies or whatever, you know, we don't have to construct a new system. We don't have to do anything. All we've got to do is change our moral compass and apply that to our everyday life, and the system has to change around us. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, all of this corruption, all of this, this war, all of this miseducation, the homelessness, the profiteering from people, 
the scarcity that we're in, the fiat money system. If people were doing the right thing, they wouldn't be supporting the fiat money system. If they changed what's in their hearts, they exactly. wouldn't support it. It's simple as that. Well, that's, every well, aspect that's of our life. And if they bring along a resource-based economy, the zeitgeist movement, Ubuntu or whatever, if people haven't changed their moral compass, then it isn't going to matter. Within 10 years, we'll be back where we started because we're still doing the exactly. wrong thing. We had to do. And if we were to change exactly. our moral yeah. compass, we don't have to do anything else. It's really that simple. The whole world organically change around us. It's so simple. And people well, can't see the forest for the trees. They can't see that it has to come from within and that that's where the change is going to be. They want someone to send them a yeah. newsletter to say, because I supported your movement, I've got the newsletter that says the world cha has changed. Now I can continue going to work and doing the shopping and all the stuff that I'm doing. Well, how has it changed? You know, if you haven't done something about it yourself, then it's not going to change. That's why people vote mm -hmm. for Trump and think he's going to lead them to safety. He's not. You have to lead yourself mm -hmm. to safety by changing what's in here exactly. and applying it to the world. And the fact that people can't you know, see I that, would, I mean, you know. You know, I would, I would, I would, I would really love it. I'm not saying he will or won't. I'm on the fence. I don't know. I would really love it if Trump decided to start talking to the people about personal responsibility and about sovereignty and about things like like what you talk about to try to try to motivate people out of this false sense of you know of entitlement and um, he won't do any, you know as far he won't do any of that he won't do any of that because he's a player he's playing the same agenda yeah. he's playing the same foreign agenda as the previous administrations all he's doing is giving them all the band-aids for all the mess that the previous administrations have created, which is why they created that mess. So he could come yeah. along and give you all this appeasement and escalate the global agenda, which is exactly what he's doing. Yeah. But what you were saying about, about you know, the hearts and minds needing to change and the reality change around, that's exactly why transitional phases are needed and that's that's exactly where those transitional phases come from transitional phases are are, are neither created nor provided by governments by corporations by anything like no. that transition transitional phases are, 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 are yeah they, they are created by the people because it's needed like you said an idea whose time has come that the, those are the transitional phases yeah, and, and I think and we're just slowly a, starting to see that. Thing. I mean, if people started doing the right thing and what they do, hang on, you get to work and hang on, I can't do this. This is the wrong thing. It doesn't matter what it says here. It's the wrong thing to do. And they just did the right thing. That would create ripples. That would create ripples. And you see all these businesses and companies falling apart that were polluting the environment. I mean, the transitional period would be an organic thing which would manifest itself out of necessity for there to be something like that. And if everyone was in their moral yeah. compass, we'd be we'd go along with it. It would work. There might be psychopaths who don't want to do that. Well, that's fine. They can go live on Christmas Island or something. Whatever. Get them. Get them over there. Get them. Get them off. Totally. We can put all these politics and stuff on Christmas Island. Give them all a hammer. They can have their war. Not a problem. Just don't involve the rest <laughs> of the world. You know. So I always, I always, I always like to say you vote with your money, not not at the polls. Because <coughs> no matter who you vote for at the polls, Wall Street gets in no matter what. But you know, just like you've watched the Matrix movies, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that one scene where um, where it said that um the 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 machines of the Matrix are directly. Um, dependent upon um, the rules, you know, of their matrix. Well, similarly, all these corporations and everything depend on the money system. Um, if the if the money system was suddenly just gone, these corporations would have no no power to do anything. You know, money is like like the lubricant in, in the gears of the corporate machine. You take that away, the machine grinds to a halt. Um, also, just recently, for example, um, you've heard of um, Tropicana um, Orange Juice Company, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there, there there's so much more awareness here about GMOs now, and no, I'm happy to report. You know, I live here in Chicago, um, on on a on a local radio station. I don't listen to much local radio, but I happen to be um in a local mart, and they had it, you know, playing over the speakers and whatever. And I was at the checkout counter. Um, there was actually a commercial on talking about how GMOs are dangerous. 
and you know in, in information about why GMOs are, are bad and all this and that and that was on local AM FM radio and I was like holy shit right like you know um, that was freaking awesome well because of the rise in awareness about GMOs and there's even like cell phone bar scanners where you can scan the barcode of an item and and really actually find out whether it's, it's truly GMO or not um, basically, um, sales for anything GMO have lowered substantially in the United States, plus the majority of countries outside of the United States will not buy GMO garbage. So Tropicana started seeing steady declines in its profits. So they were actually forced to go non-GMO in order to raise their profits again because they couldn't export to too many places because most places won't buy you know most countries won't buy gmo bullshit and sales started going down here in the united states so you know if they're not bringing in the profits they're they're screwed exactly. <clears throat> so they had to adapt to the will, will of the people the people voted with their money yeah well, that, that really helps, and that's what people should do. That's why you know, the whole boy, boycott, divestment, sanctions about. And, yeah, people should stop supporting anything that, that supports harm, injury, or death. Any company that can be seen to be supporting anything that supports harm, injury, or death, just stop supporting it. Stop supporting GMO. GMOs are dangerous. They're causing sterility in three generations. We know this. We know that's what they do. Um, there's been all sorts of studies. Just stop supporting it. Stop supporting anything that, about the system that you don't like, and, yeah, vote with your wallets. We should do that. I mean, it's, this is why I've been calling for a day of non-compliance for so many years. You imagine what would happen if we all stayed home and just didn't spend money for a day. It would send a shockwave around the world. The whole, the whole economic system would fall apart if we didn't spend money for a day. Wall Street would crumble. It wouldn't know what to do. Imagine if none of the Dow index, nothing moved for the day. That all freak, mate. All those people on the floor would be going, oh, my God, what do I write down? Where's my reality gone, you know? <laughs> so we could really make a difference by just, just staying home for a day. You know, that's, that's what real non-compliance is. That's what a real revolution would be. You don't have to go and march in the street. Just stay home and don't get involved in the system. For 24 hours, just do not get involved in the system. Turn off your cell phone. Turn off your television. Don't spend any money and spend some time with your family. Imagine if the whole world did that, David. It would be incredible. Oh, here's the guys yeah. walking through the Oh, oh that, 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 that reminds me. Oh, that reminds me of something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. You know how, how you want to make um, um, the 15th of uh, some month or another um, International Non-Compliance Day? Yeah. Um, my suggestion. My, well, my, my suggestion there. I've had a good and, it, it, in order to in order to give it enough momentum, um, why don't you just make it so that the fifteenth of every month is International Non Compliance Day, so that you know if you don't get the numbers you're really looking for the first try, well, there's plenty of other months after the first one, and you can gauge month by month, um, you know how the response to that is is going. Or if you just make it once a year, if you make it once a year, it's going to take way longer to gauge. It's yeah, not well, going to be as effective. Uh, that may work. That may be an idea. So I think there's a, a woman trying to do that already. I think um, oh, there's a woman I've got on Skype. I've got so many people on Skype, and I feel really embarrassed that I can't remember her name. Karen. I think a lady called Karen is actually already trying to do that on the 15th of every month. Perhaps I'll have to contact her and see what she says. I've got so much on, so many projects on, it's hard to know where to even begin. It's difficult oh, to get I, anything. I feel, yeah. But so now I've got all these tours. I mean, I've got I've got nine months of traveling ahead of me now. This is going to be the last tour I do yeah. for a while because I'm just getting too old for it. I, I really need to have some time off, and I want to go and, mm -hmm. and get some films finished. I haven't finished a film since 2012. They're going to pull down the tower. They're, they're out there now. You know, you know, in a we're going to lose in a the internet. Sense, in a we're going to lose the internet in a minute because I can. Oh, the workers, the workers have just walked out to the tower. We're having our tower pulled down here today, folks. This is life in the Amazon, for, and uh, yeah, we have very intimate there. internet here in the Amazon. I can't even complain because I'm in the Amazon. We had so yeah. bad, and the IT guy came out to fix it. And it still didn't fix anything. So now they're here to replace the tower for us with another one that's four meters well, higher. 
It's still uh, has been to be really done. great to, right. to, it, It's still really gr been really great to have you on, and and I'm sure we'll probably um you know hook up again on here in March when you're in Hawaii. So anybody in in Hawaii yeah. in, in March, uh, be on the lookout for Max Egan, and um you're also going to be in um Ohio um in person at Rock the Farm as well. Um and that's going to be when yeah, again. I'll be there. I'll also be at the Free and Mind Conference in Philadelphia in, uh, in April 20th, I think. And I'm going to speak in Acapulco in Mexico in a couple of days. Yeah. And then the... Uh, oh, when, you are you gonna, the Mall, when, when are you going to be at Rock the Farm? Rock the Farm will be the 5th of May, I think. I think it's the 5th, 5th okay. and 6th, I think. Uh, that weekend, okay. any other weekend, the 5th is on. It's around then. And um, then I'll, the, if you go to my website, thecrowhouse.com, you'll see a, a banner there that says Combo combo workshops hawaii and there's a series of workshops i'm doing there over a five-week period in hawaii uh which is really wonderful yeah. for the guy and uh there's a retreat there called earth song which is interesting because that's the name of one of the films i'm working on and it's just wonderful for the people from the retreat to be flying me out there and, and putting up for us and i'm going to um, do some talks and some meet and greets and just some hang out with people and do some combo workshops and just kind of check the place out so i'm really looking forward to that and then go from there to a free mine in philadelphia on on uh april 20th and then go from april actually then go from there to um, a gig there on april 22nd uh hopefully with marty Leeds. i did an interview with him last night i gave him a bit of a hard time said that i definitely would want to see him there and um yeah, that's the ways. Are you still there? Okay, and I am back. Um, sorry about that, both me and Max having technical difficulties at the same time. Um, he was saying that they might be starting to work on the tower at the moment, synchronistically, at the same time. Um, my computer had issues and, and crashed, so um, that was incredibly interesting. I am typing with um max right now to uh see if he can get back in yeah the energies have definitely been interesting um max will be back in here in a moment if he can be if they haven't fully taken down the tower yet and um you know if he can get back in and in the meantime while we are waiting to see whether or not that happens i just want to say yet again that the paradigm shift in educational comedy we've got um the patreon link so that's patreon.com forward slash psec media that's p s e c media for max egan's patreon that's patreon.com forward slash max egan and um, I had mentioned Katarina Roy earlier, uh, patreon.com forward slash Katarina Roy, seeing as we mentioned her earlier as well. So, um, and of course, for Max Egan's website, um, you can hit him up there at um, thecrowhouse.com. And um, he also has a YouTube channel, of course. And once um, I can get back into alignment with him here um i will be um just asking him whether he wants the link to this uh you know this youtube file once everything is saved in or if he wants the file direct from me on skype or whatever i'm not exactly sure how long that we've uh, been on air at the moment hopefully it's been a decently long time and um even though we synchronistically seem to have aligned with um <laughs> you know, his internet connection literally like, you know, the the tower being like removed and, and rebuilt and crap. Um, we will be having him on again in March um, because that's going to be his next available open window to be able to get back on and have internet and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, he's going to be in Hawaii in March, which is pretty cool. Katarina Roy's in Hawaii. Um, you can go to thecrowhouse.com to look up all the details of exactly where Max is going to be and when. And um, we will get him back on here as soon as possible. I think um, the conversation we were having is very interesting and very relevant. And I hope um, the rest of you watching 
maybe think about these topics and consider um, discussing them amongst yourselves on whatever platforms you all have going because you know the idea of just you know this wave of compassion hitting the planet and everybody just kind of getting triggered and facing their shit like that's just been like a big theme of 2017 so far and you know i think that um humanity is at a point where it's being offered a really good um opportunity to you know just kind of face our own messes and you know clean that out and clean out all of this um this shame that society has you know put into us all of this all this low self-esteem and you know false sense of guilt and you know realize that um we can be the person that we want to be um we can be the change that you know we want to see in the world and that we see the world as as we are not as it is so you know um you can be the change you want to create and yeah it, you know it's going to require facing yourself and sorting through paradigms and shifting through paradigms you can't just like you know meditate and go off into the five the fifth dimension or whatever because uh guess what as as i have sung on one of my song parodies called dealing with a new age paradigm um 5d you will not earn if you just watch the world burn so um you know i'm not saying you know don't be new agey i'm not saying don't believe in quantum physics i'm not saying don't believe in jesus i'm not saying don't believe in god i'm just saying that you know god said seek and you shall find because god helps those who help themselves um, we get presented with opportunities in our lives and whether we see that these opportunities as opportunities or as burdens it's kind of like you know the negative um, if you kind of view it the same as manure meaning literally shit um, you know we can roll around in the manure and act as if it's it's victimizing us or we can use that that manure and plant the garden that we prefer you know taking um the negative and viewing it as a positive opportunity for positive change instead of doing all this shun the dark shit or oh back satan or whatever you know make peace with those demons inside of us so that we can stop psychologically projecting outside of us because all of the external dysfunction that creates genocide more and all the stuff outside of us that we don't like it's because we we are not as individuals willing to um, face ourselves inside of ourselves and clear out all this programmed shame that society and peer pressure and all that you know has has put into us that fucks with our heads and you know the more that we can we can clear that out you know the more effective we're going to be at viewing the negative as a positive opportunity um for positive change so um you know it's quite an adventure it's quite a journey it's not going to be you know be easy um you know there's gonna gonna be some challenges but you know through challenge there's there's growth you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right so um i would just like to suggest in closing because yeah obviously max's towers uh <laughs> you know being chopped down here so should probably make an ending statement and and close this out just you know believe nothing just believe nothing question everything be calm about it um you know when when you feel emotionally triggered inside instead of reacting in shame like oh i, I should know better than to be acting like this and then go into denial mode and have it co-opt you just you know own your emotions realize that even your negative emotions are your property and you have the right to feel them and once you give yourself the right to feel them you're going to stop this negative feedback loop of of suffering inside of you and then it's going to be a storm that goes through and then it passes and the proverbial sun will come back out again and you'll gain a bit more of your sanity and self-control because you can you can think and make wiser decisions when your brain isn't constipated so respect your pace of learning be easy on yourself and when you start seeing you know your program neural networks uh flaring up and getting triggered instead of going into guilt and denial hit the pause button on it and go okay i see why that's happening there now what would i rather do 
And when you're not in judgment against the negative emotions that you're feeling, you can hit that pause button. But when you're not owning your emotions and you're thinking, oh my God, I shouldn't be sad. I shouldn't be angry. I shouldn't be this. I shouldn't be that. Oh, I'm a bad person for thinking that, feeling that, etc. When you do that, you lock yourself into slavery in that pattern and you start to do and think and feel all the things you're not wanting, <laughs> you know, and the, it just becomes a big, horrible mess. And then you end up in the loony bin or, or a, a politician, <laughs> depending on your social class. Same thing anyway, right? So <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a nice day, night, morning, whatever it is on your part of the planet. And um, catch you later. And we will have Max Egan back as soon as possible. So thank you. Love you all. Catch you later. Peace out.